My name is Sue Merck, um, and I write mostly science fiction. I've got a couple of books here, Immunity Index and Dual Memory, which are science fiction. And if you would like them, I will give these away at the end of the reading um, for free. And it's our science fiction. Yesterday, I moderated a panel on literary science fiction. What is the difference between literary, or can science fiction be literary? There is a divide between what they call literary as a, as a genre, not as a writing style, because we, just, we established that you can write literary science fiction as a writing style, and then there's science fiction. There's not a big overlap between them, or there is, but there's still a divide, and what is it? And I want to talk about what I think the divide is between science fiction and literary fiction. Um, and the difference starts with the idea that we all need to achieve self-realization. And we've been told this by Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung and a whole bunch of, of uh, religious leaders, that if we understand ourselves deeply, we'll awaken our highest potential and find inner peace. But on the other hand, as we know, Martians could suddenly land and blast all of humanity into ashes and knowing our true selves won't stop them. This way of thinking about things, that external events matter more than individual self-realization, might account for the difficulty some people have with science fiction. Its stories tell an uncomfortable truth, according to Barry Elm and Malzberg. He was a science fiction known for his dark humor. And in 1980, he did a very daring thing. He tried to define science fiction. And he said, it holds that the encroachment of technological change will make the future different, and it will feel different to those within it. Lasting significant change is uncontrollable and coming in uncontrollably. Regardless of what we think or how we feel, we have lost control of our lives. This is inimical to the middle class, which has been taught that increased self-realization is increased control. It will be these changes, those imposed extrinsically and by force, which really matter. Now, we wrote this in 1980, and how much has changed since then? And how much control have we lost? I was 25 years old then, and I remember a few things. Cyberpunk appeared in the 1980s, and it criticized electronic society and the way that it might control us. If cyberpunk dystopias haven't become fully realized, that's because the future isn't over yet, but it's moving along fast. And so far, we have lost anonymity. No one, or anyone, can be famous right now, whether they want to be or not. You can, if you deserve it, or, whether, or if you don't, get mobbed on X, sometimes including incredible death threats. You can't hide, and nothing is forgotten. We can never be anonymous again. And another thing we've lost is truth. In the 1980s, unofficial lives had a hard time spreading. No, unofficial. But now, barriers to retelling lies have fallen to zero, and truth has become weaponized. So what can we do about the loss of anonymity or truth? Not much. Technology also affects the climate and weaponry and medicine, warfare, legal and illegal drugs, and the economy, including your ability to earn a living wage. Our world is changing, and we all know that we have problems. And yet, we keep on telling science fiction stories in the face of knowing that our lives and the lives of our characters are in many ways out beyond our control. And despite that, we do something puzzling. Some of our stories don't spiral down into despair. And I suggest that that's because deep down, we understand that self-realization won't save us, but something else might. If we understand science and our world 
and our universe, we can fight despair and even dabble in optimism. Now, I may know my true self perfectly, but that won't stop the Martians. <laughs> if I have a phaser and I set it on stun, I can hope to slow down the Martians long enough for peace talks. I can hope for a happy ending. Now, you should try to know yourself because it will bring you benefits like increased self-control, which we all need now more than ever. But that wisdom alone won't save us from external, out-of-control change. Our understanding of science and technology might. We can imagine how to respond effectively. That kind of knowledge is power, and that power is what fuels science fiction. Thank you.